Resin 3D printing and cold weather don't really mix too well. And while it is possible to have a successful print in a colder environment, you raise your chances of success if that resin is warm. In fact, manufacturers of resin make sure that they indicate the optimal operating temperature for that resin when you put it in your 3D printer. Now there are resin 3D printers that have heated vats pre-installed, but those tend to be on the more expensive side of things. And I would be willing to bet that the majority of people don't have heated vats in their printers. So what are those people supposed to do? Just take the winter off like a motorcycle rider from up north because it's just way too cold to print? Well, no. There is hope for us yet, because I've got a product that I'm going to be testing out from Chitu Systems that solves the cold resin problem. This is a mini heater for resin 3D printers. And Chitu Systems sent this over to me so that I could test it out. And it couldn't have come at a better time because it is starting to get cold pretty much everywhere around the United States. Even in the South where I am in Georgia, I print in my garage and that garage is not heated. It's not climate controlled. So the temperature in there tends to get around the mid to high 50s most of the time. If it gets really cold, then that temperature in the air is gonna go down even lower. But if you live in some place like Colorado or some other place where it's gonna get bitterly cold and you have your printer sitting out somewhere in a place where it's not naturally heated, something like this might be exactly what you need. And to make things a little bit more interesting, I also have some Conjure Standard 8K gray resin. Chitu Systems also sent this over to me. And oh, look right here. There's a logo for Zhang He over there in the corner. I've reviewed a few of their resins before and I am big fans of their products. So it'll be interesting to see how this turns out. Now I do wanna make something perfectly clear. Having warmed resin before you print doesn't necessarily mean that you are guaranteed success when you print. It just means that if you happen to be in a colder environment, warming up that resin is gonna increase the chances of you having successful prints. There are no guarantees in this hobby, but something like this will be able to help you out a little bit more along the way, especially when it starts to get cold. So inside this box, I have a little thank you card here with the QR code on the back. So this user guide is going to have a controller panel buttons description, as you can see right here, as well as some important operation guidelines that I do recommend everybody check out. Now this is going to plug into the wall. So here is the power adapter that's gonna to go to the mini heater. And this right here looks to be a black lining that I'm gonna to have to put under the lid for the printer. So we'll get to that when we get to it. So it looks like this is gonna be the heater right here. And here is the control panel that it is attached to. So basically installing this doesn't look like it's going to be too difficult. And if you're wondering, well, how in the world are you even going to get this stuck onto the printer? That's what this is for. Well, this is a little articulated stand. It sort of reminds me of something that you would get with a GoPro. And on the underside of this block here, there is an opening so that you can screw this in, you know, kind of like a tripod mount. And then once you get that in there, you'll be able to secure this down on your printer with the lid off. You get to angle it in the direction that you want. So ang angle it towards the resin vat, and then you just connect everything together and turn it on and start heating stuff up. And if you're wondering how exactly you're gonna get this to stick on your printer, you get this. So we got tape on one side, and then this right here is actually a magnet. So one side is gonna stick down, and then you'll be able to put this right there onto the magnet, and that's what's gonna keep it in place. So pretty simple stuff. It is 60 degrees in this garage right now, and a second ago it was 59. But this is still a pretty low temperature in here. I can feel the cold in my nose, so this will be ideal for having something that will keep that resin nice and toasty. So on a printer like this one, you can see like there's no space up front to put something like this. So instead, this would have to go around to the back of the printer. It kind of just gets like right there. And then if I angle where the heat is going to go, it will be a little bit higher than this, but I would definitely move it so that it doesn't uh, come in contact with the, with the plate as it moves down, but it's going to be angled somewhere 
around here. So all I got to do now is just kind of get everything plugged in. And I'll take this tape off and get this mounted. So my biggest concern right now is making sure that this does not hit the heater as it's coming down and going into the vat. So before I even stick anything down with tape, I am going to just kind of do a little bit of a test here. I'm going to move this Z axis by 10 millimeters down. And I'm just going to keep on doing that until I can be sure that this part here is not going to touch this. All right, so at this point, I'm pretty much in the clear. So this gives me a good indication of how far up I can put this and how far back I can put this. So I'm going to try to get it pretty much as close as I can, maybe about right there. And I just have the sticky side of the tape down on the printer. Um, I didn't try to take off any adhesive on this side. I just wanted it just to be the magnet. So that way I can just easily take this off and put it back on whenever I want. So as you can see here, the temperature is in Fahrenheit right now and I'm going to change the temperature setting. So I'm just going to press this button on the far right. It has the Fahrenheit at 95 degrees. I can move the temperature up and down just by using these arrow keys. We'll see how high that it can go to. So we can go all the way up to 248 degrees Fahrenheit. We don't want it to be nearly that high. So for this resin, the recommended printing temperature is going to be about 85 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm just gonna move it down to 85 degrees and the fan is going to continue to work until it reaches this temperature of 85 degrees but if I wanted to I could also go by time and just set a timer for how long I want it to uh, heat up for. So I got my lid right there as well as this rubber piece here and I am just going to start fitting it all around the underside of it. So let's go ahead and do that. So I admit that took a little bit longer than I would have liked, but I did manage to get this uh, black barrier all the way around and there's most likely going to be a little bit extra. So you'll just have to cut that off with some scissors. And now I'm just going to put this right back on top. And I don't think it's going to sit flush anymore, but it should be enough to keep the heat in. So let's check the temperature on this unit. You see that we're still going up to 85 degrees, but I just put the lid back down. So let's just go ahead and hit the play button. And when I hit the play button, you can hear the fan start to kick up on the inside of this chamber. So we're currently sitting at 61 degrees, 61.9. And once we get up to um, 85 degrees, then it's going to turn itself off. So pretty handy. I started doing this at 925. It is now 931 and the temperature on here has now reached 84.9 degrees. It's about to hit 85 any second now. So that's approximately how long it took. There we are, 85 degrees, and I was able to hear the fan regulate itself as the temperatures got closer to the target. So everything started to slow down. All right, so now that all the heat is inside of there, we got this rubber seal all the way around. That should do a good job of keeping that heat in so that it doesn't escape. And now I am going to start my print. Now here's the other thing, because we got that rubber seal on, the printer is not going to operate because this one has a safety feature that won't let it start unless the lid is securely on. And I can try to kind of jostle this a little bit to see if I can trip the sensor, but if that doesn't work, what I'm gonna have to do is just go into the settings and disable that safety feature so that I'll be able to print regardless. And lots of people do this, especially if they're trying to get like a time lapse and they don't want this shield to be on. So I'm going to disable that setting and that should allow me to print just fine. So if you have the same printer and you want to know how to get around that, we're just going to go to tools. I'm going to click these four squares up here. We're going to go to door sensor and just going to turn it off just like that. Now we can go back 
and start the print as normal. So it's 54 degrees inside of this garage right now and this print finished at some point during the night and we see here on the control panel is still holding it pretty much at 85 degrees on the inside. This took seven hours and 51 minutes to print, so about eight hours, and the temperature held steady. Now, as soon as I took the lid off, you see that that heat is escaping. So it's trying to bring the heat back up and that's not gonna happen when the lid is off. So I'm just going to stop it right here. And taking a look, this is uh, Galactus. I see one tiny little failure point right there where the supports had separated. But like I said, this isn't something to guarantee that everything is going to be perfect with your print. Things can still go wrong, but it's going to keep that chamber nice and warm to increase your chances of success. So it worked out pretty good. So you just saw the heater in action. Now let me show you what I printed with the heater on. This is a Thor versus Galactus statue from Wicked, and it's almost done. There's a few small parts that I still have to print, but this is roughly pretty much what it's gonna look like if you choose to print this out for yourself. And my experience with that resin was pretty good. Didn't have any major problems with it at all. Was able to scrape it off the build plate easily in one piece. The supports came off pretty easily as well. I think I had a normal layer of uh, exposure time of about 2.1 seconds or so. Bottom layer exposure time of about 35 seconds. You know, so it, it just worked out. So it's a pretty good resin. So now let's talk about this heater. I think this heater can be extremely helpful, especially if you live in a colder environment where the temperatures go much lower than they do in my garage. Even though I can successfully print in temperatures of the mid 50s, low 60s, because I've done it before successfully, it doesn't mean that that's always going to be the case because temperature based failures are a very real thing. And if you live in a colder place like I, came from Indiana. It gets so much colder there than it does down in the South. And it's places like that where the surrounding air at times can get bitterly cold. And if you still want to print, you still want to get your models, you can be assured that within that chamber, that heater is going to continuously work to reach and maintain the temperature that you set. So while everything outside is cold, the inside is going to be nice and toasty. And that is going to help make sure that your prints don't suffer from a temperature based failure. And I love how easy it is to set up. You don't need to know anything really to set it up. It's literally quite plug and play. The most time consuming thing I think is going to be putting the rubber strip on the bottom of your printer's lid because you're going to go around one side and then one side's going to pop off and you'll have to go back and do it again. You know, once everything gets nice and stretched out, it's going to stay the same. But that was the most time consuming part. And then the other thing that you have to just sort of think about is the placement of the heater, just so you can make sure that it doesn't come into contact with the build plate as it's going down or any of the other mechanisms that come down along with with the bill plate. As long as you can clear that, and I am gonna leave a link in the description to the Chi2 Systems website where they do show which printers they have confirmed the heater to be compatible with, and you'll be able to know exactly if you're gonna be able to use it in your printer. This mini heater occupies a nice middle ground that's gonna keep you going in the colder months until you can either buy a, another printer that has a heated resin vat that's probably gonna cost more money or until this type of technology becomes standard across all printers. But until then, for $60, this is a really nice option to try. Thank you all so much for watching and remember, if you wanna see more videos like this, reviews and the like, be sure to subscribe because I always have more coming. So until then, take care of yourselves. I'll speak to you soon.